As Parkinson's disease progresses into the middle stages, endogenous dopamine levels continue to decline. As a result, many patients start to notice that when their medication starts to wear off before their next dose, they'll become stiffer, slower, and have more tremor. When they take their next dose, it also takes longer for it to take effect. We refer to this as motor fluctuations when patients go from feeling on when their medications are working well to off when medication levels drop and cause them to move more slowly. The two main ways to address these motor fluctuations are to increase dopamine or extend the life of their levodopa. Increasing dopamine can be done by increasing the dose of their carbidopa levodopa or dopamine agonist, having them take levodopa more frequently, or adding a dopamine agonist to levodopa. We can also treat motor fluctuations by changing their immediate release carbidopa levodopa to extended release formulation. That will cause fluctuations in levodopa blood levels to reduce because the ER formulation lasts longer. However, it's important to remember that the immediate release formulation has a higher bioavailability than the ER and CR formulations. So you can't just convert the dose one-to-one. -one. They'll need a higher daily dose of levodopa from the extended release formulation than they did from the immediate release formulation. Now, let's discuss medications that extend the life of dopamine. They can also be separated into two categories, those that delay the breakdown of dopamine and those that modulate dopamine in the brain. Dopamine, as we discussed in an earlier MedMastery lesson, is broken down by two enzymes, monoamine oxidase B, or MAOB, and catechol O-methyltransferase, or COMT. MAOB inhibitors, such as risagiline, selegiline, and safinamide, prevent levodopa breakdown in the central nervous system, or CNS. The COMT inhibitors, including entacapone, tolcapone, and opicapone, prevent levodopa breakdown in the gut. Two medications that modulate dopamine in the brain are amantadine, the extended release formulation, and estradiphalin. Amantadine is a weak NMDA or N-methyl-D aspartate receptor blocker that helps make dopamine available longer by increasing dopamine release and decreasing dopamine reuptake. Estradiphalin is an adenosine A2A receptor blocker. Adenosine, like dopamine, is a neurotransmitter. However, in terms of motor function, adenosine has an opposite effect to dopamine. So by blocking adenosine, you can improve motor function. As there are so many options, it can be overwhelming to know where to start. One strategy that I use is to identify how much off time the patient is having around each dose. Most of the extending agents only increase the on time by about one hour per day. So if patients are having up to 60 minutes of off time around each dose, then the best option is to start by increasing dopamine. If motor fluctuations are less severe, then I choose from the above options by looking at a patient's non-motor symptoms, including cognitive decline, hallucinations, and orthostatic hypotension, and select a drug that won't worsen them. Next, we'll discuss these medications in more detail so you can feel confident choosing, starting, and monitoring these drugs. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.